I kind of remember like, I don't feel like I was really in my body, but I feel like watching myself. I was like, whoa. And I just didn't know what was happening really. The first day I, my stomach started hurting. So I asked my parents if I could stay home from school, right? Finley had developed what we thought was a fever virus and his temperature was getting up to 103, 104. And I went home and I stayed home that like whole week in my bed. And then my stomach started really, really hurting. I was crying a lot. His breathing began to get very laborsome. And by early Sunday morning, they had thought he developed pneumonia. He was hallucinating and his chest was concaving because he couldn't breathe. By Sunday night, a team of nurses rushed in and had to rush him to the PICU. Everyone is just working together to help support these patients and families who are going through the worst day of their life. I feel like it was just yesterday. I remember Finn very clearly, a red-haired, beautiful boy. One of the PICU doctors came in and said, we need your help. Can you help us make him comfortable? He needs to swallow the tube. We need to start the process now. In this COVID world, you get so scared of ventilators and everything. And that's kind of how we were feeling at that moment. And then I remember kind of She said what he has is MISC, it's multiple inflammatory syndrome in children. I got tested for COVID, I had to get like my blood drawn, and then said I had like, what's it called? COVID. It's like COVID antibodies. Antibodies. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> Were you surprised that you had had COVID and didn't know it? Yeah. Why it happens, we really just don't know. These antibodies start affecting all the organs in your body. There was new sets of battles that we had to overcome, yeah. like him speaking, him being able to sit up, things like that. But because we had been so encouraging to him, like, Finn, you will live, you will fight. One of his first words were, I will live. It was definitely a roller coaster ride for us and for the family. And when you get kind of stuck in that situation, like you have to position yourself to be in a place of faith. There is just so much being shot at everybody right now. And so it's, it's like your mind just wants to go to the worst place. And you forget that there are people that have been trained for the worst case scenario, they know what they're doing. These are the situations where we need them as much as they need us. Like, you know, we all need to be a tight group and their faith in us. And if sometimes they believe in a higher power and miracles, like, you know, that happens along with whatever we as human beings can do. He has such a positive mindset and he is a fighter. He, um, you know, he really, I was really impressed. He just had an incredible support system. And I feel like that really helped with his motivation to keep fighting the way that he had been. We do know a little bit more about MISC two years now later from COVID than we did at that time. Though honestly, I don't think anybody can fully understand and why some children have it and some don't. We personally don't want to be defined by this moment in our life. We don't want our son to. You're not the kid who almost died, you know. This is just part of our DNA is overcoming. Yeah. And that's what the world needs right now. We all just need to overcome.